We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. A social media works too. We're everywhere is Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Now, the best place is for questions to come through the website. That way they don't get lost. We're not going to say no to a question asked anywhere. As part of our second anniversary celebration, we wanted to open the floor up to you, our guests, to ask whatever you wanted. All right, what I'd love to hear today, as opposed to our normal AMA topics, are questions that aren't specifically game night related. Like, I don't want to talk about our best whatever games or our favorite whatever games. We have been doing this for two years now, and what I'd like to open up to the floor is any questions that put use to the experience we've gained during that time, and for questions about Sean and I specifically. Just a chance to get to know us a bit better, not just by what games we play. Well, and to start off, we're going to get a uh, question that came in from Binks Games. What is right. your snack of choice? All right, snack of choice. So, again, I'm not just game night, but if I was just going to have a snack, it's going to be cheese and crackers. Now, that is not cheese and crackers with meat, particularly, charcuterie, really. Um, I love getting, we, we subscribe to the Carnivore Club which is a monthly meat box where they send you meat all the time. And we'll be sure to drop a link. It'll be an affiliate too, because we have an affiliate with them. We'll drop a link in the, in the show notes to our, our, our carnivore crate. It's a Canadian thing where they send you a box of meat every month. And it's all like cured meats and it's cut meats and stuff like that. That's just, just amazing. Um, and we have a local place called the Cheese Bar. Uh, run by a wonderful woman, Sarah, who just started going to local farmer's markets selling Ontario cheeses and now has done well enough that she has her own store in Bell River. And between those two, we get meats and cheeses and then we toss in some bread and crackers to go with it. That is by far my favorite thing to snack on. Sometimes we'll even do that for dinner. Um, the date nights that Deanna and I have been enjoying every other week uh, since quarantine and to keep sane, that's what Deanna and I will do is we'll build a nice big charcuterie board with lots of meat, cheese and breads, have some craft beers and play some board games. For me, my go-to is, well, salty anything to some degree, but uh, primarily potato chips. Uh, okay. I, I was brought up in a potato chip family, and it never went away. Uh, although I have to say, I have been drifting more towards uh, flavored pretzels. Not okay. um, not like actual, like, big full pretzels, but like the pretzel bites and the, or, the, or the crushed pretzels with, with flavoring on them. There's a couple of different brands of those. Um, uh, and as well, uh, for some reason, combos have been dirt cheap at uh at stores lately so i have been doing a bunch of combos as well just you know and that, yeah without the meat and cheese if i'm not doing the meat and cheese because like that takes slicing and dicing and time <laughs> combos are my favorite right I, I just the standard cheddar cheese pretzel combos i don't want the pizza i don't want the weird flavors or the the the, the cracker version i just want yeah, standard cra cracker salty. versions of combos are wrong they do yeah. weird things in the, your mouth. They're okay, but the texture the of them, the texture of them goes all wrong. Although I have to say, I do like the blue cheese version of uh, of the of the combos. Yeah, see, I don't like blue cheese normally. I can eat that. The pizza is my second favorite, right. but the standard nacho cheese combos. Yep. Plus, you have to bite them in half, and then just you like let it sit in your mouth and lick all the salt off, <laughs> and then eventually eat that. Then you got to eat the cheese tube from the middle, and then you eat the other half again, licking all the salt off first. Right. There's this. There's a method to eating combos. And for some reason now, I haven't done this in years because I, I pretty much stopped drinking pop, which should shock anyone who's known me for a long period of time. I honestly cannot remember the last time I had pop, but it used to be combos and Sprite specifically. For some reason, those two went together so well. And I have fond memories. Now we're going to tie it back to gaming. Is sitting on the blue couch at my parents in the corner and reading the AD&D Monstrous Manual, the giant binder shape, and having to finish a page. So I would finish one whole page and then I would eat one combo and I would take a swig of, of a Sprite and then I could flip the page and read the next monster. And I would get so frustrated when you get to like Orcs, which was like a two page entry. And I'm like, oh, I want my combos. And that's how I'd pace out my combos back in the day. There you go. Uh, next question uh, comes in from, uh, and we've had a few uh, tech, tech in the chat room is saying uh, corn nuts. Uh, corn nuts, fair. And uh, Red Meeple Ryan's uh, putting out Cheez-Its. What are cheese? It's they're, they're, they're a cracker. They're the um, square ones. Yeah, they're a little cracker that's sort of a cheese flavored ish. Okay. Cracker. Someone waved a brick of cheese near a cracker once and yeah. colored it. Colored <laughs> they, it they orange. coated it with the orange yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, I don't think I'd ever call them cheese flavored, but they're good. <laughs> I, I don't mind them. It's just calling them cheese seems to be a insult to cheese. 
<laughs> Fair enough. What are, there's others I like, but those are, those are definitely my favorites. The, the one I used to like, and it was um, Scott Rogers, Professor Scott Rogers from Board Games with Scott, used to be one of the, one of the first video uh, podcatchers or whatever vloggers, whatever you want to call it. And he was sharing the cheese flavored crackers that have peanut butter in the middle, and they come four to a package, and you can only get them in the states. <laughs> And I'm like, I used to have these all the time, but every time I had them was when my parents would go on bowling trips and I'd go with them and we'd be in the hotel and that's what would be in the hotel vending machine or in the rest stops, like in Ohio where rest stops are literally a washroom and a bunch of vending machines, right. not like our rest stops here and getting these things. And I'm like, oh, I miss those. I'm like, I kind of want some of those. Right. Uh, we have a question from William Brown, uh, William J. Brown the third. All right. Uh, how can I be a guest on your show? All right. Uh, William's been asking me this for a little while now. William, one of William's goals is he, he is a newer content creator who keeps being shocked by how easy it is to get certain things done. Right. So one of the things he did was like, I'm small. I can't get important people on my show. And he wrote Jamie Stegmeyer of Stonemeyer games and had Jamie on as a guest. And he's like, Oh my God, that worked. I didn't expect <laughs> it to work. And it's just one of those people who thinks the gaming industry is way bigger than it is. And I felt this way at the same time. It's, it's a lot closer knit and smaller and, and, hobby than you would think it is so one of the things he decided is he wants to go on other shows and he figured the best way to do that was to ask people to be on so he wrote me to ask how can it be on your show and i thought this would be interesting because for our two-year anniversary i think this is particularly apt because this is something we've been talking about both in what we did in the past and what's going forward so in the past we've had three different guests on uh we had phil vacchione we had tracy barnett and we had daniel zayas i think that's all we had on right i'm not forgetting anyone uh tracy phil and daniel yeah that's yeah it. i think those are the three so we had those three and, and no insult to them but they are three of our worst performing episodes ever and i think there's a reason for this and the reason is we're not an interview show where you are an answer your gaming question show with a review yep. segment, right? Like our, our main drive has always been answering your gaming and game night questions. And whenever we have an interview on, we kind of make up a question like, what well, today's question is, what's Ironetta all about? Or today's question is, what's Phil doing with power, power whatever, powered by the apocalypse? Or, right, we kind of had to make up a question. Hydro hackers. Phil did hydro hackers. <laughs> yes, Phil did hydro hackers. And many other games. But, yes. like, well, actually, we spent most of that episode talking cyberpunk, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and, I mean, and well, our we, we kind of got there. Video yeah, we video games. And, yeah, we kind of drifted over there from the hydro hackers. Uh, it, it was. Star. And they went well enough, but it's not, I don't think it's why people listen to us. No. Now, that said, I think it is worth getting guests on, but I think we need to get guests on. And I don't know, I think it was Deanna who pointed this out of the three of us talking about it, is get guests on, but still stick to the format. So what I said to William was, how can you be on your show? He'd have to answer a question. I'd go through my list of questions, and hopefully there's something William J. Brown III knows about that I don't, or that Sean doesn't know about. Yeah. So we would have William J. Brown on the show to discuss the answer to one of your questions that we don't know the answer to. Right. So we've also talked uh, a couple of times, especially at the end of last show during our after show for episode 100, which all patrons can listen to at least is we talked to uh, red meeple Ryan in our chat room saying at some point we would like to have him on the show to talk about accessibility and gaming because he is a blind meeple and we are not. So he has firsthand experience. We will hopefully never have. So, It'd be a perfect person to have on to talk about that. Although now, when you were Brown, about, I don't know exactly. The way me. you were complaining about the size of text on things. Yeah, you maybe. Me fast. Fast. <laughs> if it, it, it might be coming soon, right? But that's it. I think that we, how to be a guest on our show is going to, I, like, I don't even know if people could reach out to us. If you're an expert on something, let us know. And then like, hey, do you have any questions on this? I'd like to help you answer them. Right. Would probably be the best way if someone wanted to reach out to us to be on the show. I think more likely, Sean, Deanna, and I will sit down and go through our list of topics and go, hey, I think we could use someone else here. Like if we were, if we were going to talk about anything about accessibility or BIPOC or any of that or safety tools, I don't think we're the ones to talk about that. We'd be better off having someone else who's more of an expert on to talk about those things. Yeah, I mean, we did a talk on safety tools, but I think yeah. it could have been better with with some professionals from, from that field. Exactly. Uh, and then, 
the one of the other options that I think we've tossed around about, and I don't think we've ever really come to an agreement on, other than we don't have enough time in a week, is doing a separate video, a separate interview outside of yes. the podcast, where it's you know we sit down and we talk with them and we do an interview show, but it's not this. It's yeah. a bonus. It would be separate instead thing. of yeah. Like heck, maybe it would replace our the game room. Like me, it could maybe be a segment on the show, but it wouldn't replace the Ask the Bellhop. No, no, it, yeah, it would, and it would probably not even like be recorded on a Wednesday night. It would be right. all right. Let's find the time in our schedule where all of us can get together and do a do a Zoom interview, yeah. and then we fit it like, in. As for a, example, here's a Donald Dennis has asked me to be back on on board games again, which is pretty awesome. But Donald Dennis works at a library. He runs the Games and Schools and Library podcast. We have at least two questions about, I want to start a game club at my local library. And I'm like, I, I was thinking of that the other day. I'm like, that is a perfect connection. Like, if anyone could talk about getting games into your library, it's Donald Dennis. I can't. Like, I, I'm sure I could do my research and we could, like, the, the, we have enough experience and we can do the research to answer the questions ourselves. But that's where I'd want to do an interview. That's how I'd like to have guests on the show, is right. that way. And I think if that does happen, again, this is, this I, I, I'm not promising it's going to happen soon, but I am going to try to get William on since he specifically asked um, that we are aiming for probably the second of July, but I'm going to sit down with them and go through our questions and say, Hey, are there any of these that you're like, Oh yeah, I know about that. And then we'll try it out. Um, especially using zoom. Now we should be good, especially because zoom seems to keep giving us free extra time. Well, it but won't, if, if it won't, the, the time you need it to, it won't. I'll, yeah, I'll that's the that. problem is that's the <laughs> other problem is now that we're using Zoom, we're limited to 45 minutes. Uh, but I mean, there's no reason we can't jump back to Skype. Honestly, it's quality wise. I, I'm not really seeing that much of a difference. Um, and in, no, and in guess, some sorry, ways, July it's actually, already happened. I'm talking about past again. What's the month after August? I this quarantine. <laughs> quarantine. I was, September I was 2nd. September 2nd. September 2nd. Uh, no, I, I to be honest, it's actually even easier for me to get. Skype into the uh yeah. <laughs> into the into the show anyway. So um you know we'll we'll see we'll see what's going on. And it depends somewhat it depends on what they've got equipment wise and, and internet wise yeah. as well. So all sorts yeah, of Yeah, well like I said that the people I've talked to already already record podcasts. What I don't know is like Donald Dennis, I don't know if he'd do video. So we may have the the um the looming voice <laughs> interview show. And well, I mean, even we can, then, we once we do a, it, we'd have to come up with the format too. Yeah, I mean, get me a get me a headshot, and I'll you know put up yeah. a we can put up a headshot of them and, and mm -hmm. use that. There's nothing wrong with that at all if you don't want to use video. And in some ways, that's that's better because it cuts down on the bandwidth. Well, issues. yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, William J. Brown the third, and anyone else who's interested in being on the show, um, like I said, reach out. Let us know what your area of expertise is. Ask if we have any questions, or if you've been asked a question by someone, that would work too, right? Like if. If you're, you're on Twitter and someone asked you a great question, you want to talk about that question, maybe our, we're, we could be a platform for you to answer that question. Yep. That would work as well. All right. Well, moving on, we've got a question here from Louis Martinez. How do you manage your schedule? <laughs> Badly right now, to be honest. Um, this is, this is something we need to fix. So this was something we were actually better at when we launched that I, has slipped out of practice i don't even know why so we used to use trello and deanna at the time i'm not saying she lost the skills but trello might have changed was a trello expert especially with using butler bots or something i she was the expert not me <laughs> but she was able to use these like butlers which are bots in trello to have it like pop up with what you had to do each day and then you drag things to different columns and it reminded us what to tweet and what to share and everything else that just fell by the wayside um, part of it being because we fell behind on a couple things. I was getting really annoyed about all the notices coming up for stuff I hadn't done yet. Um, plus it was extra work. Like it, there was, once you use Trello, be, once you start using a formal schedule, update the schedule has to go on the schedule somehow. Right. So that ended up becoming more work. And we got to a certain cadence where we just did the same thing every week. So it just worked. Um, that was going pretty good until we started doing two reviews and then it took a bit to sit down and reschedule. So right now, what I actually have is a notepad file literally in windows notepad that lists three different schedules. One is what's going up on YouTube. The next is what's going up on the blog. And the third is what I need to promote and it's working. But what I'm not doing, which is hurting us in the long term, is I'm not re promoting things. So at this point, if you follow me on social media, one notice, go to new thing. It. 
And that's actually bad for social media. I should be then three days later saying, hey, in case you missed it. And then one month later being like, hey, a month ago we, and then three months later going, hey, did you catch this out from last quarter and so on. Now, Deanna is the expert on that and how often you should do that and where and on what platforms. And I, she does that professionally, right? So we should be doing more of that and we're not. And we need to find a way to get back to that. So that's probably going to mean starting up Trello again, but it might mean something else. I don't know. Yeah, I've uh, I've experimented. I was using Microsoft To Do for a while um, because it had a real handy copy and paste. And the, the main thing I was using it for uh, was pre-show because earlier on, before I automated a lot of things, there were like, you know, 32 steps of things I needed to go through before the show on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. And if we missed one of them, uh, things got all out of whack and, you know, streams didn't work and audio wasn't ready and, and there were a world of problems. So it was, that was how I got started on using the scheduling system right. was just that one thing on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. um, and then as we started breaking out more um, into the uh, various other components um you know the, for the for the podcast it's easy it always comes out tuesday at 2 a.m mm -hmm. so i've always got from whenever we finish on wednesday until tuesday to get it out uh and then uh but then we started doing all this youtube stuff and that's where things got a little bit more complex mm -hmm. because we've got to break them up and then there was the express that had to get done and we needed to make sure okay you've got to have it recorded by whatever time mm -hmm. on Friday so that I can have time to get it all around and, and, and prep. Uh, so for a while I was actually using a whiteboard um, with all the re YouTube release dates. And I would write in what show, what episodes or what segments or what unboxings were going to get released on given days. Um, just so that I could look at that, look up at the whiteboard and go, Oh, it's Wednesday today. I need to have this ready and this ready. And mm -hmm. I would just cross things off once I got them uploaded and let you know. But um, we're, at, we're at a stable rhythm right now where I, I just kind of fall into it. I know yeah. that Thursday night I'm going to do that or, you know, Wednesday night I'm going to do this. Thursday morning I'm going to do this. Friday I'm going to do this. And then I'm pretty much good again until uh, the podcast. See, I'm still having a hard time scheduling the writing of the stuff. So trying to figure out, and I, I don't know an answer to this, when to put out the content on the blog versus the YouTube and when to even write it to have it ready. So what I've been doing now is we decided before I was always writing the review and then we would have the podcast and I basically read off the review and I've switched that so that now we, the first time you hear us talk about a game is here on the live show. And that's to encourage people to join us here on the live show. And I think it's worth doing. If you want, you want the, 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 from, from the horse's mouth, like if you want the original, you want to know my first thoughts on the shadow run beginner box. The only place you're going to hear that is here tonight. You're going to hear my first thoughts on the shadow run beginner box. Now we did cheat this week. Quad heroes is already live, but that was just so we put out some content last week when I was off for a week, but normally you wouldn't hear about quad heroes until the show came out. So we switched it so that I'm not publishing that stuff until after we talked about it here. So now I have to, and, and then the YouTube versions come out and we decided the YouTube versions are going to come out Fridays and Sundays. So I decided to put them out on the blog the day before. And the reason is anyone watching on social media is going to get confused. Like I I've seen it happen. I've seen people reply if I put them out on the same day, because I'll be like, Hey, quad heroes review up on YouTube. And then five hours later, I'm like, Hey, quad heroes review back on the blog. And everyone's like, yeah, I already saw your quad heroes review. Why would I click through right where technically they're two separate pieces of content right. consumed possibly by different people or people might want to read both. So I decided to release them the day before. So you will always see it a day ahead of time on the blog. And then the YouTube version comes out the next day, but it's different with the ask the bellhop. The ask the bellhop now comes out on Saturday and I've started putting it out on the blog on Sunday. Right. But just because that was a day I wasn't putting out anything else, right? So I still, that still may change for when that stuff comes out and gets written and whatever. Just because, like I said, I don't want to promote the exact same content on two different platforms on the same day. Because people are going to think they're the same content when they're right. not. So the, the short answer to Louis Martinez is, how do you manage your schedule? Very badly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is. Right now it is. That, that, Deanna is saying, we put way too much thought into this stuff. Maybe we do. Yeah. Like, like, I know this is the thing we, we do way more work than a lot of other podcasters. And I'm not saying this is a good thing, but like, there are so many pod 
casters who just like sit down every Thursday and turn on their mics and go. Mm -hmm. And like, that's it, right? Like maybe they, like, like even our show notes are excessive compared to some people, right? Like I, I was on onboard games and I'm like, so you guys have show notes? They're like, oh no. And yep. we're sitting before the show started going, well, what should the topic for today be? And I'm like, seriously? Like you guys are on the episode like 340 something. And they're like, yeah, we've done it so long. We know what we're doing. I'm yep. like, all right, fair enough. Like there's a lot of people that just sit down and do it, right? And I will say our life would be so much easier if we only did one of the things, right? Like yeah. when, when we do a review, we're talking about it here. There's a YouTube version. There's a blog version. There's also the weekend reviews we talk about for weeks leading up to the review. Like most people, their review will be a 10 minute segment their podcast along with everything else right yep. like we definitely give a lot more focus which is why i don't know if people have noticed it but in the last year i've switched to calling them detailed reviews i always say we'll have two detailed reviews this episode because i'm also going to talk about other games which are technically reviews right when i talk about our weekend review and i'm talking about how my game of jaws of the lion went last sunday that's just as valid as my detailed review telling you what's in the box yep but yeah, we schedule badly. We're, we're working on it. <laughs> Deanna and I keep talking about we have to get, like I said, Trello or something, something more, something I can refer back to and then look into software for scheduling for the social. Because I spend a lot of time tweeting, posting, copying, pasting onto various social media sites. And if I could switch that to whether it's using something like Buffer or if this, then that, so that I put it in one spot and then it just goes and yeah. I don't have to worry about it. Unfortunately, if this, then that is, has been so unreliable over the years, yes. uh, you know, you really need to kind of think about, do you, do you want something that you're going to put all your rely on to, and then all of it, you know, all your reliance into for mm -hmm. it to just go wrong. And all of a sudden it starts spamming people or something. Yeah. Uh, Cause we've seen that happen with if this, then that. For that yes. So if this, then that's not their fault as much as the, the social media, sites changing their yeah, API. No, absolutely. There, there, it's there's it's a not lot of them different... keeping up. It's yeah. that like Instagram doesn't tell anyone they're about to change their API yeah. and then just there, does yeah, and everything no, breaks. No blame. It's just that's yeah. you know, what happened <laughs> basically. Like I said, our, our best bet's probably something like Buffer is one of the, the well-known ones, which I uh, guess you have to pay for. But I think we have a copy through AppSumo. So I think we have a lifetime copy of that. Where's a tip, right? All right. So we were talking about things that people could ask. And I know one specifically asked this, but if you want something we've learned in two years, subscribe to AppSumo. This is a, a they, they give various apps, plugins, WordPress plugins, software cheap, and often take things that are monthly subscriptions and offer them for one-time fees. Now, these one-time fees usually aren't cheap, but compared to paying forever are usually worth it. So there are a few things we've gotten through that. And I think D can probably drink, drop a link to AppSumo in the chat and we'll throw one in the show notes as well. So if you are thinking of being a content creator, now I'll admit, I get emails from them constantly. It's nothing I want 99% of the time. It's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. A lot of it's for online sales. If you have a web store, right. a lot of it's for that. But now and then you get this like awesome thing. One of the things we use it for is um, stock photos. We have credits at a number of stock photo sites bought through AppSumo. Not that I use a lot of stock photos in our in our our um, blog post. Ninety nine percent of it's my own photography, but there now and then a topic comes up, and I'm like, I don't know picture for this. Like, how do I get a picture for Angry Gamer? I don't have right. a picture of an Angry Gamer. Yeah. So we'll use stock photos for that. So yeah, AppSumo, we've gotten some great stuff. But like I said, most of it's ad agency level. It's it's not stuff you need, but we have gotten good deals out of it. Excellent. All right. Well, we're going to move over to one of Ryan's questions came in from right. Twitter before the show. I think he was uh, stocking up. So he didn't forget during the show. <laughs> Fair enough. Ryan asks, is there anything you've done or wanted to do with tabletop bellhop that you've had to abandon? Um, hmm. I gotta think about this. I should have so, read the questions. Uh, the, ahead easy, of time. the easy answer for me is tabletop express. Uh, the yeah. Bell or Bellhop Express. The Express show was something that we thought was going to uh, make a difference. It was that short, encapsulated uh, speed view of the week uh, that would give people uh, an inter an engaging sort of uh, newsroom style uh, show about what was going on in that twenty minute timeline that you know YouTube seems to like for advertising purposes and all sorts of things, uh, and it failed. Uh, nobody watched yeah. it. Uh, I mean, there were a couple of people who did, and thank you to those people. But unfortunately, for the amount of work we put into it, it failed. <laughs> yeah. 
See, I didn't actually list that because that wasn't something we wanted to do that failed. We decided to, like, I don't know. Well, like, we didn't you've start done going, we're going to do this. Do. Yeah, so, okay. Fair I don't enough. know what you might have wanted to do that you've had to abandon, but uh, but that was something we've done that we wanted to, yeah. that uh, we'd ended up abandoning. No, what, no, what we should do, and I haven't done that, is go to YouTube now and see if any of those are having views now. If they, they had long-term stay. I doubt it. Not they likely, definitely but, weren't yeah. at the time. Yeah, I don't, that seemed like it would be a good format. Yeah, um, it, 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 it fit it fit all the it, it fit into the uh sort of the box of what you're supposed to put out on YouTube. For yeah, non gaming <laughs> content, obviously. Yeah. It's gaming content, I guess people don't. Um our original some of our, our, our insert buildings we had to give away. The the one thing we still haven't done, I don't know if we've abandoned it yet, but we're close, is going to two cameras. But the thing is I think we need something better than these laptops to get there for downstairs up here. I keep meaning to do it. Um, again, I haven't abandoned it though. So there, we might do it. Um, I definitely want the top down camera at some point. We got to figure that out with a yep. blue screen. Yep. And I hear a blue screen is better than a green screen because most board games have green components and not as many blue. Right. So supposedly blue screen is better. That's something, but again, we haven't abandoned it. Um, there's a good one. Deanna's pointing out our Patreon. We definitely haven't found the right reward levels. Like right. we, we came up with all these these great higher tier rewards that we thought people would be interested in that are way cheaper than say hiring a consultant, but seems no one's interested in those concierge <laughs> services. Right. So we might need to retweak it. Now I will admit we did great at up to the, the hotel guest level. Like that worked really well. Like what we did to revise it up to that point was good. Uh, we do have one awesome patron who is taking advantage of the um, chair at the table level, which is great. Which, speaking of which, we owe him some games. Hopefully, John's feeling better from his slip and fall. Indeed, yeah. But yeah, our Patreon definitely didn't go as well as we'd hoped. Though, again, I don't think we've had to abandon it, but we might just, we might as well abandon those higher level tiers that aren't getting any interest. So I just took a quick look over on YouTube. And for the Express videos, the Blue Plate special, which was the one that we forced people to watch, yeah, uh, has, 160, has 116 views. Uh, yeah. And then it drops down to 60 as the next best, all the way down to 16. So Yeah, so like 16. Like, yeah. that's terrible. Part of it, too, is like, how do you come up with a good title? We talk yeah. about too much. It's not concise in the knowledge that's in each one. So, yeah. like, that's part of the problem on YouTube is that um, you have to, like, to promote it for SEO purposes. What the heck do I put in a title to encompass three reviews and all the games I played in the last week and discussing best six player games, right? Like, yep. cause that's what we did in the express is we put all of it in one. Yeah, no, that was a tough one. Um, coffee. I basically given up on <laughs> There's a whole bunch of things I tried to do for money. We basically given up on, I, I can't think of anything we really wanted to do. We didn't do though. Yeah, no, we've, we've no, it much... didn't work is any of our live streams, like our big live streams did nothing like our extra life lives. Yeah, no, we, we, we haven't had luck with our, with our parties or our extra life live streams or the various, uh, times we've tried to just, you know, get a camera and get people interacting with, uh, the games we play and the places we play and, uh, and, and get a little, you know, interaction on that more personal level that's that's mm. not us talking to you but sort of inviting you into the games with us yes yeah that's exactly what i was trying to allude to like like we'll stream 24 hours for extra life because it's extra life and it's a 24-hour event but like no one really watched that we had a couple people join in even more so was um like we did our new year's party the one year and we streamed that yep. like it just i thought people would care and no one seemed to care <laughs> which is fire yep. but i actually thought i see other people doing that and i see big crowds and Another thing, here's something else, is, is interaction with the chat during actual plays. We haven't right. found a good way to get that to work. Like, I thought there would be more, because we never figure how to get donations. Like, uh, Critical Role and all those do it, right? Where you you can, like, whatever, donate five bucks to give someone a re-roll or to change the plot. We kind of gave up on that. Like, that never really took off. We never really figured out how to do it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so, let's see here. Um going to jump back we have another question from william j brown to the third that that's similar to that and what has been the best change you have made to the product you produce i think splitting out the youtube videos taking taking the full show and cutting it into segments i think is the, is the best thing we've done 
Though I don't know. You look at the numbers and I, I wonder sometimes. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely up there. I think the rearranging of the, the show order. Yeah, that's a good is, one. Is it may, maybe, you know, it's, it's right up there. It's, it's, it's a close call. They both had some pretty serious impact, I think. But, uh, you know, when we, when we brought the ask up to the front and pushed the reviews and the, the, mm -hmm. uh, the week in the review to the back, um, I feel like that was a significant change that just kind of feels better for the flow of the show. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Though it does always, I always wonder if people just tune out after we finish this segment. <laughs> it sometimes feels that way. Though I have had but three people now write that they hate the first half of our show. So fair enough. There we they go. don't, that we spend too much time interacting with you people in the chat. Sorry. Yeah. Though I don't care as long as they keep listening If they jump an hour ahead. That's fine. They're still <laughs> Absolutely. listening. Absolutely. Right. They're still fair. If you yeah. dig my opinions on games, that's cool. Um, I, I, that's probably the best one. I think the unboxing videos have gotten way better compared to when I sat back in a chair and kind of held stuff up. Yeah. We've, we have we are definitely getting there. It's, I mean, we, we still like need, they, they get more hits and stuff. We still they need seem more, to do better. Uh, but it's, it's definitely getting there. Um, and what I think I need to do for the unboxing is to switch downstairs. I need to be downstairs, with but, the but I'm not, I'm, I'm telling you, you're not allowed to go downstairs until you get lighting. So yeah. <laughs> there's, there's your, when, when we get the lights down to you, yeah, when we get the um, lights, well, we can move downstairs because the, the table space is definitely a major yeah. benefit. Uh, I know. You Plus, then I can do struggle. the two cameras and I should be able to do the, the top down. Yeah. Right. Like, like yeah. I think that's the next step. I know. I know you struggle with with the amount of space available on yeah. that desk. Uh, yes. And that's a huge <laughs> thing. You know, you look at a lot of these unboxings and they've got a dedicated table. Yeah. They've um, opened up the whole thing. They've, they've got a game table. Yeah. But uh, but it's too dark down there to do it right, really. Like, to show off the components properly, mm -hmm. you need the light. Well, that's where I think you also need the drop down, right? Because I'm going to have the camera further away. I won't be able to hold stuff up, right? right. I, yep. Whereas if I can hold it off to the, the drop down camera. Um, I don't know. There isn't, we haven't changed our overall product that much in two years. No. Yeah. Have you but made, like, have you done anything notably different on the blog? I mean, you just redesigned just the, the order. The well, yeah, we just, uh, the, the, that, that's a big change, our branding. Working with RPG and Co. So That's we're true. working with Brian Vice with uh, playrpgandco.com. Awesome t shirts. He's got some really nice dragons he's now done yep. for the different dragons. He's got a Beholder shirt that I really want a copy of. Uh, he also has done design work now for uh, Tabletop Renaissance, which is uh, Windsor's newest local game store. And there's someone else I'm trying to remember. I got him, I hooked up with him, someone who was a new podcaster, and I'm okay. forgetting at the time. Um, the the uh but the new look right. and what we just did a huge update on the blog to our mobile site we look so much better in mobile now little things about centering images where our sidebar shows up there were some definite advantages um like even deanna's admitting it now she's like gutenberg blocks for the win which is something well, i you know never what? thought i would hear d yeah. say because gutenberg was the bane of her existence when it first yep. appeared I, it really is better right like yep. it took a while for her to learn it i still don't <laughs> i still I still use classic editor on uh, right. WordPress for all my blog posts. Yeah, I haven't I haven't had had to work in a uh, I, I, I started dabbling in Gutenberg for a little bit in one blog that I was contributing some stuff to. But I, I just kind of I walked away from that. And so I haven't I st I'm still a classic editor person because I, I knew I was playing with them and I saw something, mm -hmm. but I just didn't have the time to uh, to jump in and, and do anything with it. So yeah, that's a, that's a big one. Like our rebranding, the the layout of the blog is definitely better. The addition, I don't know how many people listen to it this way, but the when we got Aaron, Aaron is our webmaster. The awesome Aaron Lynn is our webmaster who helps us get all this stuff done. Now, Deanna does a lot of it herself, but Aaron's the the pro that gets us to that next level. When we added the the bar at the top where you can listen to our podcast no matter what page you're on on the blog, I think was a big one. Uh, we added advertisements. I I don't know about that being the best change we've made, but it does <laughs> help pay the bills significantly. Yeah. It, it has made a big difference in our ability to continue doing the show. I do hate the fact that our blog's filled with ads, but we have now learned how to manage where they show up, which has made a huge difference. Right. Uh, for example, our our Gen Con sale page, uh, which I sent a link out to our in our newsletter. There's still like sales out there. Was showing an ad every item. Like Oof. it would show a shop, then an ad, a shop, then an ad. I counted 52 ads on the page the first time. I'm like, my God, what are you doing to me? But we now know how right. to 
do it so we can we, we we don't specify where the ad show up but we put breaks so hey media vine if you want to throw an ad here you can is right. what we do now so i do apologize for the ads but you know what they're making a huge difference in our ability to keep doing this and and that's pretty important for especially yeah. for all you people who actually like listening to us uh let's see here what else have we got um uh we got a quick and easy question here from tech in the chat room any new hardware for the show, or is it just still the light sitting at Sean's? Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's the light still sitting at Sean's. Oh, you almost lost a bit there. It's yeah, just... no no new hardware. I went shopping for a new webcam. I was going to buy a 4K webcam, but I didn't realize that COVID made webcams scarce. Yeah, no, webcams, so in, that webcams didn't happen. In, in pandemic times are not available. Yeah, which I, I had no clue, but I guess it makes sense. So no, no, no actual new hardware. We have new games to review, but that's not hardware. <laughs> uh, no, no, no changes. Plans, yes. Sean's got lights. I do want to get a new, because what I want to do is I want to switch this to a 4K and then use that for the drop down. Right. That's the plan, because I need a new one for the drop down either way. Yeah. And I'm thinking 4K is probably better for the wide view, whereas you don't need well, 4K. Well, I mean, if we could just get close. the camera that you've got there. Well, uh, the up? camera works. The problem is it doesn't yeah. work on these laptops. She doesn't I have know. the USB port. Yeah. The camera works fine now. I finally got it to work. It had to do with the ports. Yeah. But I, that the, that's possibly the other thing that's on the list to buy is a PC for downstairs. Instead of the laptop, I had dedicated PC for streaming, yeah. put it downstairs, and then we start broadcasting from downstairs instead of up here. And it goes somewhere under the, like probably in the curve of the, like the, the table legs on my thing are big round semicircles. Yeah, yeah. So kind of nested under there. I don't know. That, that, that's a long-term plan. <laughs> All right, well, we've got a question here that came in from Hungry Gamer. I've made the jump and started an Instagram for Hungry Gamer. Tips and tricks to make it useful? I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm definitely on the no clue uh, side of that one. So I will let you speak on how the heck you do Instagram. All right, so we do pretty good on Instagram. We're not great. We're not blowing anyone away, but our average post hits over a hundred hearts, likes, whatever. And I have almost 5,000 followers. So at, I, compared to other gamers, I see there are people doing better, but there are a lot doing worse. So some of the tips are post every day, put up one picture every day. Um, make sure it's a good picture. Don't just necessarily throw from your camera. Instagram includes um, a ton of, of photo editing built-in software that's actually really solid for adjusting your brightness, your focus. You can even in, do the whole um, make only one thing in focus, everything else blurry, all that fun stuff. Use those. Don't just necessarily post straight up from your camera. Um, the other one is hashtags. So place once a day at least, possibly twice a day, and you want to include a ton of hashtags Right now, I think it's 30 per post is the recommended. Yeah, that's the this thing. Is why I don't do Instagram. Yeah. This right here, this description that Mo is going through is why I don't Instagram. That's This <laughs> is the worst part about Instagram. You want to you include like 30 hashtags every post. Uh, right now, I couldn't tell you what's better, but it switches between put them in the post and put them in the first comment. Yeah, so in Instagram is very SEO-ish. Yeah, so the, the tags are important. Hashtags are huge. That's how most people are going to find you. Right now, it's actually people are recommending you put them in the post itself, not the comments. I continue to just put them in the comments because I'm lazy. But what I have, and this is my pro tip, is I have a notepad file, and I have a similar one on my phone where I have listed board game. And then I have, uh, I, was it hashtag or pound? I always want to say pound because that's what I know it is. But has, tag game night, tag board games, tag board game, tag board gaming, tag gaming, tag BGG, tag board game geek, tag tabletop, tag tabletop gaming, tag analog gaming, tag games of Instagram, tag Insta games, tag gamestagram, tag play board games, tag board game addict, tag play more games, tag board game life and tag oh i have gaming twice see i should <laughs> fix that that goes on every post i put then if it's a certain type of game i will add other ones so let's say it's an escape room then i add tag puzzle tag escape room tag escape room in a box tag puzzle game or if it was a review it would say tag review tag board game review tag game review tag tabletop game review and so on so what i do is i 
copy paste the appropriate tags for whatever I'm talking about. And then the other thing is you shouldn't do quite what I'm doing. You should swap them up. So you should have a couple different sets that you use and switch between them. The biggest thing though is post every day, like try to be consistent and post once or twice every day and you'll start doing it. Now, the other thing is interact with people. When someone you likes your thing, click on theirs and go like a few other things and reciprocate basically. So this is something we like to do while we're watching Netflix or whatever. We'll go downstairs, we'll have Netflix on, you open up Instagram, you go look and go, oh, this person liked my post. Let's click on them. Yep, good. It's all board gaming. And all you do is double tap to like and you just scroll up, double tap, double tap, double tap, double tap, double tap. Now I personally don't spam it that much. I actually click on pictures I like. Like I'm not just doing it to get the likes back. I'm like, oh, that was cool. That was cool. That's your kid. I'm not going to like that. No offense. I don't mind your kids, but I'm on Instagram for gaming. And so on, oh, look, you made a cute custard pie. I don't care. My other account, I might like that <laughs> one. Um, so basically you're going to keep doing that, right? You're going to, you're going to sit there and like back people who like your stuff what i will purposely do is find people who don't follow me and i'll like a bunch of their stuff and hopes they'll follow me right. uh, that's pretty much it so yes uh, as deanna says thank you for attending our mini blogger conference <laughs> well we did say that's what we learned in the yep. last two years no, that's absolutely. what we were looking for tonight we talked about the best two player action games with too many dice every other week so this was the chance to talk about something else yep all right so we're going to jump into a question here from ryan again uh is there anything you still have plans to do that you have yet to do i not except for just upgrade our quality right <laughs> like all kinds of quality like i said i want i kind of want to get a new pc downstairs i would like to build more of a studio um possibly get a green screen if we keep doing up here so we can hide that closet mainly that's <laughs> that's the biggest one we'd want a green screen for um no i'm getting review copies pretty regularly now that was a big goal and that's happening um part of it is the, the one thing that hasn't happened again this goes into making this viable is what i would like to do is have a way to sell off the review copies of games that i don't feel need to stay in my collection so th that also goes with i really want to call my collection down it's at the point besides just not having enough room there's so many games downstairs that i haven't played in so long it's just not worth keeping these games and I think one of the ways to make this value the viable is what people do in the tech industry. So people in the tech industry get review copies for free, similar to what we do, but then they can sell the tech and they can sell it for good money. Board games don't necessarily sell for good money, but it is a way to increase the revenue stream of this. So when I get a review copy of a game and I play it and I enjoy it, like check out our review of Jaws from last week for a perfect example of a game that I think is a great game, just not one I feel the need to keep. It's other people are probably going to enjoy it more than I am. So what I would like to do is a way to get rid of my copy of Jaws to make a bit of money for it. Now, I'm not trying to profit off the review copies that come to me. That's not the point. I've done the work. I've done a review. I've, I've done held up my end of the bargain. There's no reason I should have to keep the game forever, in my opinion. And I would like to be able to have that as a revenue stream. Now, we were going to be working with one of the local game stores to do this, who were supposed to launch uh, commission sales. But that fell through with COVID. Well, I, don't, I shouldn't say fell through, but it, it never happened. <laughs> yeah, it never yeah. took off because COVID hit. I don't know. I don't know. You have anything for that? Uh, no, I have to say, I, you know, I really, realistically, I mean, there's there's things I would love to to do, but most of them involve you know technical upgrades and trying to improve our content so that it can look and sound the best it can for the audience uh you know because the the better we look and sound the more people are are willing to to listen to things is, is generally what you find so you know quality improvements uh another question from ryan because our chat room's a little uh soft on <laughs> questions today uh if you were asked to join a board game content creation network would you accept it depends what that entitled <laughs> depends what they would want as part of a board game content creation network. Like if it was just something like an old uh, web ring, like back in the day where you all just promoted each other. Sure. Uh, if it was something where I started writing content for other people, there would have to be some kind of compensation provided. Um, I, I, like I said, it depends what you'd have for a great board game content creation. Like, for example, we talked about trying to get into the dice tower and we were kind of like, why? like in a, in a way um for one we'd have to watch our p's and q's a little more than we do now and 
uh, fair enough. I guess we could try to do better at that, but I enjoy our after show where I don't have to worry about that. We'd have to drop that segment of our show. Um, plus, I don't know what does it get us, right? Maybe a whole bunch more people will find us and we start doing better. But again, what's the end result? We get a few more listeners. We get a few more viewers. I don't know. Right. Plus then, then we're tied into that brand and some, there are things some people don't like about that brand where I'd rather be judged on our own merits. Yeah. Um, no. And the, the other, one of the other issues you get into is when you get into things like the web rings and, and, you know, sell mutual promotion things. Uh, we have spent a lot of time and money and effort building our brand to where it is right now. Mm -hmm. And unless we were moving into a group who were already at a similar point and we were just looking to share our experiences between similar levels, that would be fine. But we don't want to exist as, you know, we've got, a, you know, a thousand listeners, for instance, and we're getting invited to a group who they all have a couple hundred listeners. Um, that's, you know, there, there's some, you need some balance, right? And you need, you need, you don't want to, you don't want to be uh, letting other people ride on your back or riding on other people's backs completely. Yeah. Uh, you know. Fair enough. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, it, like I said, it would depend what they had to offer. Yeah. I, there are enough out there. At one time we were, when we launched this, we were supposed to be part of the misdirected Martin network. And I honestly still don't quite understand what happened there. We launched without them or something. I don't. I don't quite we, know. We how did that too failed. much. We did too much work on our own. Yeah, uh, ahead and, of time, and, I and guess. established a brand that was separate from Misdirected Mark rather yeah. than being part of Misdirected Mark. Is I but think the only thing, the only like I, I'm not saying that it, we might have got more audience out of it, but not counting that. The only advantage I think we go to that is we'd have Rob Abrazado as an editor, which would be kind of nice, <laughs> like a pro editor that does all the stuff in the background, yeah. and we just send them off the stuff and like here you go, have our audio. <laughs> Like that, I think that's the only thing we lose out on, in my opinion, for not being part of that network. And they very much switched to more of an RPG network than they were before. Yeah, they and then they they have definitely branched out in a different direction than what we have. Yep. Um. All right. Again with Ryan here. This is the, the Ryan Q and A show. Ryan Q and A show. Is there anything that would cause you to stop doing the live show? I don't know. I'm not. <clears throat> Not nothing I can think of, like illness, like last week, like if there's some technical breakdown, but I don't see why not. I don't get why we wouldn't, right? Yeah. Like it's it's one of those like people have asked, why do you do unboxing videos? They don't get a lot of hits, and they don't. I'll admit it. We our unboxings don't get a ton. Every now and then, one will take off, but I gotta open it anyway, <laughs> right? Like I gotta open this box anyway. Why not show off what's in there while I'm doing it? Yep. And the same thing, we gotta record this podcast anyway. And by doing it live, we get the interaction. Like tonight's a bad example because we're doing an AMA, but on our normal show, it's the interaction we have with the chat. Every time we have our Ask the Bell Hop, we stop in at the chat room at the end. And 99.9% .9 of the time, if we're doing board game recommendations, someone's got games we forgot. Or if we are talking about suggestions on how to get rid of games, there'll be something someone says in the chat that adds to that conversation. And we wouldn't get that if it was just Sean and I recording not with video on skype on a tuesday morning or whatever and i would miss that interaction that's one of my favorite parts about our show is the amount we do interact with with you awesome people who are listening yeah it's interesting because i had never considered this video was not part of the original <laughs> pitch i made uh not in the least but uh i have come to enjoy this interaction with the uh, the video i could take or leave but the interaction with the chat room uh, yeah. has really been a major part of it. So I think uh, even if something, you know, if Twitch went belly up, you know, Amazon somehow yeah. died or something, uh, you know, there's YouTube. We can go to YouTube. We could go, I'd rather not, but we could go to Facebook Live. Or, you know, there are other options yeah. out there um, for streaming that we would just switch to. I mean, we could, piv we could pivot to YouTube Live in a week easily. Yeah. If, if Twitch went down today, uh, tomorrow morning, I think next Wednesday I could have us up and running on YouTube mm -hmm. live without missing a beat. So, yeah, I would say the only thing would stop us doing the live show is if we stopped doing the show altogether. Yeah. Like if for whatever reason, like if, if it, for one thing, if this note was no longer financially viable, we may not be able to keep doing it. If, if I had to go get a real job, quote right. unquote, I personally think this is a real job, but there's people out there that don't like banks for one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if I happen to get a real job and I no longer have the time to do that, though, I have a feeling even if that happened, 
it would become more of a chit chat show with less scripting and uh, we'd only do one review a week and I, I probably still do it because i like doing it i enjoy i enjoy talking about games or else we wouldn't be here talking about games <laughs> i would probably still figure something out the blog would probably cut down to like maybe one blog post or whatever but right especially since we weren't actually uh you know relying on it as the income at that point uh there wouldn't be as much need to put the entire life and times into it and uh dedicate our lives to or your lives especially to to yeah. generating the content yeah at least like deanna says we put in probably 60 hours a week each to to not just to do this live show but everything right the unboxings the videos the the blog the blog the deals the sale pages the newsletters all of the stuff so it's a lot more work than a lot of people think yeah and i mean like i don't and i don't put in anywhere near the amount of time you guys do because again i do have a yeah. full-time job but uh you know it's to, it, you know it takes me an hour or so to make sure i've gone through the the script and make sure my ac aspects of that are good um now tonight after the show we'll if we go off the air around midnight most weeks uh i'm usually up until about 3 a.m doing the intro edits mm -hmm. uh and then tomorrow morning i get up and while i'm doing my paid job i will be uploading our youtube videos and starting to do the edits on our first of the reviews uh and then usually friday morning at some point i will sit down and do the second review uh so mm -hmm. you're looking at just with the video editing and uploading times uh you know three three hours maybe four hours depending on how much uh, editing needs to go into the reviews uh and then a whole ton of uh the actual upload times but i that's yeah that's but that's basically you're, wasted. you're not I mean, busy not, during those times yeah. um and then uh the audio podcast uh, a lot of it depends on the episode some episodes mm -hmm. are really easy i can do the edit and be done the whole thing in you know and have it ready in two hours uh, I just usually wait three days because I'm lazy and never record those little bumpers I do at the beginning and the end until like Sunday morning or Sunday night. Uh, and then upload that, throw the information in after uh, Mo and D have gone through and done all the show notes. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I'm still, you know, on a good week, I'm still doing six to eight hours of editing video and uh, audio. And Mo's coughing a little bit, but uh, we got a question here from uh, CH2674. Oh, it's Tech. I just didn't oh, copy tech. it all. We got a question from Tech in our chat room. So, <laughs> when we can get out a little more, what is the first thing both of you would want to do? Uh, I'm going for some Windsor Pizza. <laughs> I need some Windsor. Actually, you know what? I wouldn't even go out. I just go to Windsor Pizza, the place Windsor Pizza, buy a damn Panzerati and bring it home. I haven't had a Panzerati since March. That's just wrong. That's completely wrong. I haven't had a Windsor Panzerati in way too long. Uh, I want to get down to Windsor and, and game. <laughs> I yeah. just want. I just want to get down and get get down and and, and play some board games, uh, as well as deliver some light. But yeah. you know, really, just get some board gaming in, because uh, there really isn't much happening up here with me. Uh, so. Uh, yeah. yeah. See, I like. I yeah. I, I'm. I am looking forward to getting back to local events. Be hosting game nights. I'm hosting game nights. Getting to meet gamers, hanging out with friends, people like tech, and um, getting to play games. Right. So I'm falling behind on reviews because I don't have the time to play all the games. Well, I have the time, but I don't have the people. Right. Whereas if I was playing regularly, I'm certain we would have played Break Dancing Meeple and uh, Laser Chess. Sorry, it's not called Laser Chess. Roll for Lasers and probably that Animal Kingdom game because they're all quick, fast paced kind of games that I would bring them out to something like an easy mode event or a CG Realm event and stuff like that. So, yeah, d definitely going out to the games, getting Gloomhaven started again with Tori and Cat. I miss hanging out with Tori and Cat. Though, like I said, that, that's the game you really most likely, though, like go for a Panzerati. Go to the Sandwich Brewing Company on a double date with Tori and Kat because we have such a good time doing that. They have great beer. Have some good beers. Have a huge charcuterie board that we didn't have to make and cut ourselves <laughs> um, and play some light games, right? Like I could totally see sitting with Kat and Tori having some beers playing Break Dancing Meeple, right? Like I look forward to seeing them. Um, I would want to have like, like we still haven't had our Gaming in the New Year's party. So maybe have that <laughs> like the, the mid-year, the, the COVID's done. Yeah. gaming party where we we're up till three in the morning gaming playing in games. 2022 um yeah I, at this rate it might be 
Yeah, I no, mean, I, I, I miss the food. I, yeah, my I life, used to eat out regularly. My so. life hasn't changed as much as yours. I mean, I am a hermit. I, I, yeah. I've got this really comfortable office that I spend a whole lot of time in uh, and have since before the pandemic hit. Um, but being able to just sort of go out freely yeah. um, is would be nice. Uh, I, 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 part of it for me, I, I love, D, D hates this about me. I love going shopping. I'm like, I miss just like walking around like a Toys R Us. Like I go to Toys R Us just to walk around and look at the cool toys. And like, well, every now and then I want to buy stuff for the kids. But most of the time I don't even buy anything. Like I, I, I actually do miss that. Like I didn't I didn't hang out at the mall. I was never one for going to the mall. But like toy stores, Mastermind, stuff like that. Yep. Even just browsing CG to see what they have, right? What games they have, what new model kits. They got really into Gundam, I think, now the, since they used to. That's, that's a big thing there. I do. I, I miss that. Yeah, and Deanna saying, you know, our budget really likes that you aren't going <laughs> shopping. No, it's true. Like, I, I like shopping. I always have. I don't know. I got it from my mom. My dad hated it. Like, we would go to the States, and my dad would go, and he'd find whatever food court there was at whatever place we were at and would sit down in that food court for the whole time, and my mom would go shop for hours. I'd be, I'd want to be with my mom until she started shopping for clothes. I hate shopping for clothes. That's yeah. Even for myself, I just hate <laughs> shopping for clothes. But anything else, I'd, I'd hit every bookstore, every, you know, CD music shop, every video game place anywhere that happened to have anything board gaming related i, yeah. I do miss physically shopping but that's yeah, not definitely not first it's interesting since the since the pandemic i have put gas in the van once yeah us <laughs> too literally once i filled up once yeah or maybe it's twice it might have been twice because we have gone out to the county a couple times right because there's some things we can only pick up out there yeah, yeah. But yeah all right we're at 10 30 i don't know if we can do one more or if you just want to call it uh, I think at this I, point, we've hit a bunch of different yeah. topics at this point. I think Ryan, we, we missed a couple of years, Ryan, but uh, we'll, we'll throw them in there for later. <laughs> if there's something you really want us to answer, we can do, but I think we got most of the big ones. Uh, Here, what would it need to happen for us to do a show dedicated to RPG content? I would need to start playing RPGs again. I would feel bad doing an RPG show. I think I could pull it off. I played enough RPGs in my life. Like we're going to have some RPG content later in the show tonight. And I think I can still talk with authority about RPGs, but it has been so long since I've actually sat down and played one. I would feel like I'm, I'm like lying to people, not showing my geek cred to, to be talking about role-playing games and DM tips all week when I haven't played a game in three years. Like it would just feel weird. And I have played, I played at cons, but I haven't run a game in a dang long time. Yeah. Now, for patrons, I am still hoping to run something. I was hoping by next week. I don't know if that's going to happen. So I am hoping to try some role-playing. We might do something soon. So that is something. But RPG-only content, see, the thing is, like, we're not supposed to be board game content now. We're not supposed to be role-playing content now. We're supposed to be tabletop content. And I think I'd prefer to stick to that. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people would prefer if we split into two shows where we have RPG shows and board game shows. What I am hoping to do is increase the amount of RPG content we have because I have RPG content to review. And Sean even has something he wants to review. So what we are hoping to do is to not do 50-50, but one review a week for the next month or so, possibly two months, is going to be RPG content. And like I said, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people would prefer if we split this off. But if you listen to us on YouTube, you can just get the RPG content, Damn. right? That's part of the advantage of us splitting out the, the game room segment of the show is that you could just consume that RPG content all right well that's it for this week's two-year anniversary ama next week we get back to answering questions sent in from fans with the topic roger malosh asking about power creek and growing gamer experience power creep and growing creep, gamer yes. experience i'm guessing the that's power creek <laughs> power <laughs> creek that's that's me me not being able to type. remember you can find lots of gaming topics and advice like this over on the blog at tabletopbellhop.com just click on gaming advice at the top of the page uh finally if you've got a gaming or game night question for us now we want actual gaming content actual gaming questions head over to the website click on ask the bellhop or just email us directly Questions at tabletopbellhop.com.